I'm Randy Conklin. Uh, I'm from Logan County on the west side of the county. Today we're here at the Logan County Airport at the Lincoln Art and Balloon Festival. I've been piloting balloons since about uh, 1999. Uh, we came out to one of the festivals. Uh, one of our friends had a balloon, had just purchased a balloon, and uh, we started crewing with them and started taking some lessons with them and at that point decided to buy our own balloon. My name is Jim Ireland. I've been flying balloons for 16 years. Well, I'm just one of the pilots here, and I help organize it a little bit. And we're kind of, my wife and I, Nancy, are, are kind of in charge of the pilot relations as far as check-in and signing up the pilots and making sure they have all their insurance and, and they uh, comply with the FAA. Uh, Nancy and I were at a boat race, and after the boat race was over, they said, somebody said that there was some hot air balloons downtown. So we went down there and we got up close just like you are and said, I'd kind of like to ride in one of those sometimes. So we did a few years later and we took our first ride out in Napa Valley, California and we've been hooked ever since. Well, uh, the first time we went, uh, the balloons came to our house and uh, we left from there out in the country and uh, it was just a great ride, great, great afternoon to fly. We were hooked from there on. They always say your first ride is cheap, you know, then after that you buy the balloon and you, it kind of gets involved in. Balloon pilots are FAA uh, certified pilots. We have a private and a commercial license. Uh, we have to go through a ground school and uh, pass a written test, uh, have to do flight training, and have to take a check ride with an FAA examiner after you've mastered all the skills. And at that point you get uh, either a private or commercial license. Uh, we're free to pretty much take off wherever we want to as long as we have uh, permission from uh, the landowner where, where we're going. We typically don't use the airport. The airport is a nice open space with short green grass. We're typically looking for that for takeoffs and landings, um, just to stay away from the airplanes. But uh, the balloons have to follow the rules just as, as airplanes do. And there's a rules of the road for the, the sky, just as there is for the streets. Um, pe people who are afraid of heights generally don't have a problem in a balloon. Um, they don't feel the motion. Uh, they have uh, part of the balloon, the uprights, the burners, the balloon up above you so you don't really notice the height. And uh, you don't feel the motion uh, like you would on a, on a ride in a carnival. It's fabulous just to be able to fly and, and uh, get up and take off and go where the, the breeze is going to take us and you know it's just something you got to plan for and we have a great time doing it and you know you got to be willing to, to think on your feet and figure out where to where you're going to go and how you're going to land and just that that thrill is, is is what I like to do. It's just like floating on a cloud I guess is the best way to say it. Uh, you, you don't feel it's not a roller coaster ride you don't feel that sensation of speed when we're in the air you don't, you don't feel any breeze because we're going at the same speed the wind is going. The wind uh goes in different directions at, at different altitudes. Sometimes it's uh, more directional than others, but uh, you just a matter of finding different air currents at different altitudes and to take you where you want to go. If we've uh, done our homework and, and checked the weather and the weather looks good, uh, generally we're, we're in good shape to go. Uh, on the morning flights, we're interested in, in what time the wind is going to pick up. Typically, we'll only fly uh, 
couple hours after sunup and a couple hours before sunset. That's when the atmosphere is the most stable. So the only thing we're interested in is uh, in the morning flights, what time does the wind expect it to, to pick up? We stay high, stay go over the livestock. Um, some livestock are better than others. It's just a matter of watching them, try to stay up above them so, that, so they don't scare, get scared. Okay, you really don't have a lot of control, only up and down. Uh, I can go wherever I want to up and down, but if the wind's blowing to the north, I'm going to be going to the north. Uh, if I go up maybe like 500 feet, it may be going a little northeast. If I go up 1,000 feet, it may be going a little more north. If I go up 1,500 feet, it might be going a little bit northwest. So I kind of play the winds as I come up and go down, and that gives me a little bit of a direction, but not a whole lot. We also fly with the GPS now that we've got these modern things. Uh, so we fly with the GPS and that kind of tells us what direction we're going to. You see, we have to have three miles uh, of uh, clearance, to, uh, visibility to see. And, and this morning, it was we, were, we had to wait about an hour and a half for that fog to lift. You know, other aircraft in the air couldn't see us, and we can't see that far either. So we need to be able to see what's going on. We need to be able to see the power lines and everything. I still enjoy it or I wouldn't do it because as you can see when we're setting up it's, it's quite a bit of work and you can't do it by yourself. You have to have three or four people to do it. I've got my co-pilot Jordan here to help me out tonight so we, we were doing just fine tonight but you have to have you know three or four people beside yourself to do that. After we take off that's an important part. After the, Especially out here where there's so much traffic. Uh, they, their first job is to pack up the fan we have to inflate it and make sure we haven't left anything behind. And then they hop in the car and try and get out of the, fair, or the airport. And then they go try and stay ahead of me and, and hopefully it'll be there someplace close when I'm ready to land. Now, they don't have to be there where I'm ready to land because I can land without the crew, but I want them there someplace close so they're ready to load the balloon up when we're ready to pack it up. Some people look at that as, uh, as uh, when a balloon lands, it's a, a crash landing, but uh, the balloon always comes down got to get enough hot air out of the balloon so it stays where it's where you've tried to land. Uh, if it's a, a fast wind, uh, we actually just come down and pull the top, the big vent on the top of the balloon out, and the balloon just lays over, and it does look like a crash, but it's a controlled landing, and that's what we're after. People uh, sometimes uh, are flying along and feel no bumps of motion at all, and as soon as you touch the ground, oh, that was a big landing, but, uh, you know, maybe you're only going a couple mile an hour, and as soon as you touch something, it's, it's a, a jolt. I think just the way people come from all over, from, you know, Springfield and Decatur, Bloomington, they, they come from all, I was just talking to a lady a while ago that came from Chicago, it's like, that's a long drive, but she's here and, and visiting some relatives, and so, just to be here in this atmosphere is quite a thrill. I just love to fly, and uh, I don't fly fixed wing, I just fly hot air balloons. So uh, I, I think just, you know, just the camaraderie, because we, we do meet and see a lot of the pilots. Uh, sometimes this is the only time we may see them all year. Uh, sometimes we see them at four or five events. So just the socializing with the, the other pilots as well. We're all very good friends and yeah, we get, we get together and go out to eat and just, yeah, we, we are a close-knit group.